hi everyone. We're just going to sit and kind of uh, get a little bit comfortable for a little bit before we start reading. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful and safe weekend. Uh, today's books are brought to you by my favorite uh, show growing up, Reading Rainbow. Uh, we're always we're gonna take a look at what's in the book. Uh, again, my kids are gonna sit with me as long as they have patience. You know how they are. You might see them running back and forth. Uh, I've got one of my I've got one of my favorite T-shirts on. It's Belle. And we're gonna go into go into adventure in the great wide somewhere. Kaylee, what are you wearing today? I'm wearing Belle because there's a parade going on. Oh, there's gonna be a parade today. Awesome. Yeah. So I had to wear this because I wanted to watch it. Oh my goodness. Okay. So and this is my Belle crown with with you may see it's in the world Ariel Belle Lola. Okay. All right. So what's our first book that we're gonna read today? Um, Stella Luna. Stella Luna. Okay. Let's. Stella Luna. All right. So, Kaylee said, Stella Luna. Right. Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon. In a warm, sultry forest far away, there lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how Mother Bat loved her tiny, soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she cooed. Each night, Mother Bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out in search for food. There's her Mother Fruit Bat flying out. And if you look really close, there's baby Stella Luna. Sorry, we've got little ones. <laughs> Going a little crazy today. One night, as Mother Bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful bird swooped down upon the bat, dodging and shrieking. Mother Bat tried to escape, and the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and useless as wet paper. Down, down she went, faster and faster, onto this, the forest below. See, there's Stella Luna falling, back to the mother. What do you think is going to happen to Stella Luna? I don't know. Let's see. The dark... Dark leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One twig was small enough for Stella Luna's tiny feet. Wrapping her wings around her, she clutched the thin branch, trembling with cold. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could hold on no longer. Down, down again, she dropped. Little Stella Luna. Flump! Stella Luna landed head first in a soft downy nest, startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly clambered out of the nest and hung out of sight below. She listened to the babble of the birds. What was that? cried Flap. I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet. Chirp, flitter. Shh! Here comes Mama! His pip. That comfy little nest with those one, two, three little birds in it. Pip, flitter, and flap. If you're a bird, what would your name be? Your bird name would be Kaylee. That's a good name, huh? <coughs> many, many times that day, Mother Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things Mama Bird brought. Finally, Though the little bat could bear it no longer, she climbed into the nest, closed her eyes, opened her mouth, and flop in dropped a big green grasshopper. Oh, grasshopper. You think that tasted really good? 
Yeah. I think it tastes good to birds. I don't know if it would taste really good to fruit bat. Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day. She slept at night, ate bugs, even though they tasted awful. Um, her bat ways were quickly disappearing, except for one thing. Stella Luna liked to sleep hanging by her feet. Once when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. Mama came home and saw eight tiny little feet gripping the edge of the nest. Yikes, she cried. Get out of there this instant. You're going to fall and break your necks. Yeah. Oh, look at the babies trying to be like Stella Luna. That'd be a little scary to see, huh? The birds clambered into the nest, but Mama stopped Stella Luna. You're teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back in this nest unless you promise to obey all the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night. She didn't hang by her feet. Stella Luna behaved like a good bird should. See Stella Luna getting talked to by Mama Bird? Since it was her house, she needed to go by her rules. There's some rules you don't like to do, but you do because you're us. <clears throat> All the babies grew quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told them it was time to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. Oh, look how big they are. And with their wings, they're flying. If you had wings, where would you fly to? You don't know? Where would you fly to? I would love to know. Pip, flitter, flap, landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. See? Pip, flitter, and slap on the branch. But there's Stella Luna. Not quite getting it. You have some things you're not too graceful at? How embarrassing. Oh, look. Stella Luna's trying. You know, Wizard keeps trying. Ow. You think she's going to be able to get on the branch? You you asked me to bonk you. Oh, I bonked you. I'm so sorry. I'll fly all day, Stella Luna told herself. Then no one will see how clumsy I am. She was able to get back on that branch. And it's okay to be clumsy. I have my clumsy moments. Do you have your clumsy moments? Yeah. Falling's okay, just as long as you get up and keep going. The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We better go home or we'll get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far away and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. Oh, look, see, Stella Luna just keeps flying and flying. Do you think Stella Luna's flying because she can see a little bit better than the birds? All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached. She dropped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed. So she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. Hey, wait up. Oh, my goodness. She didn't hear the soft sounds of wings coming near. See Stella Luna? Still listening to Mama Bird and hanging by her thumbs? Not by her feet? Hey, a loud voice said, why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes popped open. She saw a most particular face. I'm not upside down. You are, said Stella Luna. Yeah, but you're a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You're hanging by your thumbs. So that makes you upside down. The creature said, I'm a bat. I hang by my feet. That makes me right side up. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe. Not a bat. Walking chips? 
More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella and told her her story. You ate the bug, stuttered one. You slept at night, gasped another. How very strange, they all muttered. Wait, wait, let me look at this child. Bat pushed through the crowd. Now it attacked you, she asked. Sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered, you are Stella Luna, you are my baby. <gasps> Stella Luna find her mom or her mom find her finally? Oh, what a wonderful reunion. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna. You survived? Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit you've ever eaten. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. Oh, they're so happy and full of love to see each other. Oh, thank you so much. Where should that go? You want to go in my head? Okay. I go in your head. Okay. I, I love this. I love this. Thank you. <clears throat> but it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark or we'll crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We see in the darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. It looked like Stella Luna has just beams of light coming from her eyes so she can see. Awesome. Soon the bats found a mango tree and Stella Luna ate as much fruit as she could hold. I'll never eat another bug as long as I live cheered Stella Luna as she stuffed her safe self full. I must tell Pip, Flitter, and Flap. Mm -hmm. Fruit bats love mangoes. Kaylee, do you like mangoes? Yeah, you do. Does anyone else like mangoes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, agreed Pip. Let's go. They hang by their feet and they fly at night and they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna exclaimed to the birds on the way. As the birds flew among the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. So the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We'll fly at night. Oh, see, now the birds are all hanging upside down. So they can be part of the bat world, huh? When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, flitter, and flap leapt from the trees to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, hollered Flitter. Ah! Shrieked Flap. We're gonna crash! <laughs> Gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them up to a tree, and the birds Gas grasped a branch. Stella Luna hung above, hung from the limb above them. So Stella Luna rescued her friends. I think maybe it's because the birds couldn't see at night. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's because they don't have the same eyes. No. Yeah. We're safe, said Stella Luna, and she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark too. I wish you could land on your feet, Flitter replied. Pip and Flap nodded. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we be so different and feel so much alike, mused Flitter. And how can we be so different and be so alike, wondered Pip. I think it's quite a mystery, said Flap. I agree, said Stella Luna. But we're friends, Look, and that's a fact. And I, I think they're getting ready for that. Uh, I think they're getting ready for the polar Well, maybe we've got a little bit. We do have a little bit. See, it doesn't matter how different you are, we're as long as okay. I know. I know we have. Oh no, we're okay. It doesn't matter how different you are, as long as you have love. I think that's all that matters, and you understand each other's differences, because love is love, huh? I think they love each other even though they're different, but also the same. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Oh, 
All right, Kaylee, what's this next book we're going to read? Um, uh, Gregory the Terrible Eater. Yeah, Gregory the Terrible Eater by Mitchell Sherman, illustrated by Jose Aragno and um, Arnery uh, Dewey. Apologize if I butcher some of these names. Okay. Once there was a goat named Gregory. Gregory liked to jump from rock to rock, kick his legs into the air, and butt his head against the wall. I'm an average goat, said Gregory. Say hi, Gregory. For Gregory wasn't an average goat. Gregory was a terrible eater. Every time he sat down to eat with his mother and father, he knew he was in trouble. Gregory going to go see his mother and father? He eats junk. Does he, yeah, does he eat junk? Yeah. That's not what Yeah. Would you like a tin can, Gregory? Asked Mother Goat. No, thanks, said Gregory. How about a nice box, a piece of rug, and a bottle cap? Asked Father Goat. Bleh, Gregory said unhappily. Well, I think it's a meal fit for a goat, said Mother Goat, as she chewed on an old shoe. It certainly is, said Father Goat, as he ate a shirt, buttons and all. I don't know why you're such a fussy eater, Gregory. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. See what's I know. I know. That's the other book we have. Are any of y'all some fussy eaters? I personally like to eat a lot of things, but there are some things I don't like. Me either. Yeah. I don't like chicken pie. I know. I'm not fussy, said Gregory. I want fruits, vegetables, eggs, fish, bread, and butter. Good stuff like that. Whoa. Mother Goat stopped eating the shoe. Now, what kind of food is that, Gregory? It's what I like, said Gregory. It's revolting, said Father Goat. He wiped his mouth with his napkin. See all the food that Gregory likes to eat? But it's not particularly what his mom and dad like to eat, huh? After Gregory was excused from the table, Father Goat said, Gregory is such a terrible eater. I wonder what's wrong with him, said Mother Goat. Mother and Father Goat ate their evening paper in silence. There's Mother and Father Goat. And there's Gregory, just dreaming about all the yummy foods that he likes to eat. But not necessarily what his parents are going to give him. The next morning, Mother and Father Goat were enjoying a pair of pants and a coat for breakfast. Gregory came to the table. Good morning, Gregory, said his father and, and Mother Goat. Good morning, said Gregory. May I have some orange juice, cereal, and bananas for breakfast, please? Oh, no, Mother Goat said. Do have some of this nice coat. Take a bite out of the pants, said Father Goat. Bleh, said Gregory, and he left the table. Father Goat threw down his napkin. That does it, he says. Gregory isn't eating right. We must take him to the doctor. See, this is the breakfast that Gregory wanted to eat, but not what was prepared for him by his parents. Didn't really want what was being prepared for him. Mother and father goat took Gregory to the doctor. Dr. Ram was munching on a few pieces of cardboard. Off they go to the doctor as a family. Say hi, Dr. Ram. But where is the baby? Oh, there's Gregory right there. That's not the baby. Hmm. What seems to be the trouble, he asked. Gregory is a terrible eater, said Mother Goat. We've offered him the best shoes, boxes, magazines, tin cans, coats, pants. But all he wants are fruits, vegetables, eggs, fish, orange juice, and other horrible things. What do you have to say about all this, Gregory? Asked Dr. Ram. I want what I like, said Gregory. Makes sense, said Dr. Gra Ram. He turned to mother and, mother and father goat. I've treated picky eaters before. They have to develop taste for good food slowly. Try get, giving Gregory one new food every day until he eats everything. Okay, yeah. Dr. Ram talking to Gregory. And then, then talking to... Mother and father go. 
let's see how this plan is going to work out. That night for dinner, Mother Goat gave Gregory spaghetti and a shoelace and tomato sauce. Not too bad, said Gregory. The next day, she gave him a string weave with a rubber heel cut into small pieces. Meal was good and rubbery, said Gregory. The day after that, Mother Goat said, I have your favorite today, vegetable soup, but one condition. You also have to eat the can. Okay, said Gregory. What's for dessert? Ice cream, said Father Goat. But you have to eat the box, too. Yummy, said Gregory. I'm proud of you, said Father Goat. You're beginning to eat like a goat. I'm learning to like everything. Well, as Gregory is starting to try all the new foods that his parents are giving him. One evening, Father Goat asked, has anyone seen my striped necktie? Not since breakfast, said Mother Goat. Come to think of it, I haven't seen my sewing basket today. I left it in the living room after supper last night. Gregory turn, or Father Goat turned to Gregory. Gregory, have you been eating between meals? Yes, said Gregory. I can't help it. Now I like everything. Well, said Mother Goat, it's all right to eat like a goat, but you shouldn't eat like a pig. Yeah. Oh, said Gregory. After Gregory went to bed, Mother Goat said, I'm afraid Gregory will eat my clothes hamper. Yes, and then my toolkit will be next, said Father Goat. He's eating too much. We'll have to do something about it. Yeah, I'm coming to eat. Oh, see, is Gregory starting to just eat other things that he might not be able to, me, he probably shouldn't be eating all that stuff. Because he's going to get a tummy ache. You think if you eat too much stuff, he'll get a tummy ache? Yeah. The next evening, just before supper, Mother and Father Goat went to the town dump. What? what do you think they're going to get at the dump? I think they're going to mm. get something for You think they're going to get something for Gregory? Well, let's find out what they get. They brought home eight flat tires, a three-foot piece of barber pole, a broken violin, half a car, and half a car. They piled everything in front of Gregory's sandbox. When Gregory came home for supper, he said, What's all that stuff in the yard? Your supper, said Father Goat. It all looks so good, said Gregory. Gregory ate the tires and the violin, and then he slowly ate the barber pole. But when he started in on the car, he said, I have a stomach ache. I have to lay down. Look, he looks so happy to eat all those wondrous things. But after a while, he starts to get a tummy ache. Have you ever eaten something that you love so much, but you just ate too much of it, and you start to get that tummy, tummy uncomfortable feeling? I have. Kaylee, have you ever had an upset stomach, tummy? My dad would have tummy sometimes, and I just only ate off my knees. Gregory went to his room. I think Gregory ate too much junk, said Father Goat. Let's hope so, said Mother Goat. All night, Gregory tossed and turned and twisted and moaned and groaned. We'll see. Mother and Father Goat are taking care of Gregory because his tummy hurts. And he's just twisting and moaning and groaning because it just does not feel good. The next morning, he went down for breakfast. What would you like for breakfast today, Gregory asked Father Goat. Scrambled eggs and two pieces of wax paper and a glass of orange juice, said Gregory. That sounds just about right, said Mother Goat. See, there's his wonderful balanced breakfast. And Mother Goat is making it for him. It's a nice fresh squeezed orange juice. That's Mother making that stuff. Yeah, his mother's making all that wonderful breakfast stuff for him, huh? But what it was. And it was. Oh, uh, look, they're enjoying a wondrous breakfast together. The end. You guys are itchy. Oh, I'm kind of itchy. Oh, I'm Is sorry. this the last book? Oh, yep, we have one more book. All right, let me show it out to everyone. Kaylee, do you want to say? Best. Yes. Best Friends. Story and Pictures by Stephen Kellogg. All right. Let's dive into this. Tell me if that's not that word. It's not for you. 
Louise Jenkins and I love horses, but we aren't allowed to have real ones. I said, let's pretend a, we have a stallion named Golden Silverwind. He lives in a stable in between our houses. Louise loved the idea. At school, we pushed our desks together and we played on the same team. And at lunch, we shared our chocolate milk. Chocolate is Louise's favorite, and it's mine too. See, as they pretend that they have a horse in between their houses and that their desks are together and they're playing soccer together, and they get to share that chocolate milk together. It's pretty yummy. After school, we pretended that we rode gold and silver wind. Our magic witch hats gave us the power to make our neighborhood anything we wanted it to be. And after dark, when it, se when it seemed to be haunted, we weren't scared as long as we were together. We were best friends. Oh, look at all that magical stuff that they've turned their neighborhood into. And yeah, there may be some spooky things around, but when you've got someone you love and you care about with you, you don't pay attention to any of that scary stuff because you have that warmth of your loved one with you. Okay, you don't like that. Yeah, but they don't pay attention to that. You know why? Because they're together and their love is helping them. Summer came and so did Luis's aunt and uncle. They took her to a mountain resort for vacation. Um, Luis told me that she didn't want to go. It'll be awful, she said. And I'll miss you every day. And when she left, our neighborhood turned into a lonely desert. If only Louise would be able to escape. I even wish that she'd get a contagious disease so that it'd let her come home. I wouldn't be afraid catching it. I'd nurse her back to health with chocolate milk. Man, I wish chocolate milk could cure everything. That would be so super tasty. See, she's about to go on her vacation. And it just feels oh so lonely without her best friend with her. Why? Well, don't you miss some of your friends? Why is the friend now with her? They're not. Hey, why don't you go with Daddy? I think the parade's going. Go with him. Is that right? We've got a little neighborhood car parade going, and I don't want the girls to miss it. Hold on real quick. i got to open the door for her. Be right back. Sorry, guys, I'm back. Okay, I missed her so much. I wish Golden Silverwind and I could rescue her. Finally, I got a postcard. It said, Dear Kathy, this place is terrific. Yesterday, I saw three deer behind the lodge. There's lots of kids my age, and Aunt Pat and Uncle Bart take us to camping in Pinecone Peak. I hope you're having fun, too. Love, love from your friend, Luis. See, she's wishing she could rescue her friend. But she actually seems to be having a really good time on her vacation with her aunt and uncle. How do you think that's going to make Kathy feel? How would you feel? Later, I heard Miss Jenkins say that Louise had lots of new friends and was having the best summer of her life. It wasn't fair. She wasn't lonely like me. She wasn't missing me at all. Louise Jenkins was a traitor. She was my worst friend. I don't think that's true. I wish that a volcanic eruption would blast pine coat and peak into pebbles. Mm. I cried a kind thing to think, but I can understand being upset like that and missing your friend so much. And she's sitting there hearing about her friend having such a good time. She's just missing them. And that's in her imagination that there's a volcanic eruption. Oof. Mom told me not to be jealous of Louise's new friends. Later she said, I hear that the house across the street has been sold. Maybe there's someone your age in the new family. I prayed for 50 kids my age, 50 new best friends with real horses. Her mom's being very comforting. 
and just let her know it's like there might be someone new that, that she can go and be friends with, just like Luis has been making new friends. That is, though, quite an imagination of 50 new friends with 50 horses. When the movie man came, I asked him, how many people are in the new family? He said, one. I asked him, is anyone my age? He said, no, it's Mr. Joad. He's 72. This is the worst summer of my life. The new family was one old man. Mom said that we should be good neighbors, and she sent me to invite Mr. Joad for a cookout. A pretty awesome mom right there. And she's talking to the moving guy, and she sees Mr. Joad right there. Now she talks to her mom, and there, she has a good listen. She went to go talk to her new neighbor. Let's see what she finds out with from him. When he saw my witch hat, he said, I wish you'd use your magic powers to help me find good homes for the new puppies that Sarah is expecting. I ran home to ask mom if I could have one. She said, yes. I couldn't wait to have a puppy of my own. If Louise Jenkins wanted to play with it after she got back from Pine Cove Peak, I'd say never. That would fix her. That's not very nice, is it? See, but just Sarah. See, Sarah is the dog. And Sarah is pregnant with puppies, huh? And Kathy's so excited. So, I don't know if that's such a nice thing to not want to share with your friends, but I can understand being a little upset. Mr. Joe and I talked how much fun it would be when the puppies were born. I told him I wanted a spotted one just like Sarah. The first spotted one will be yours, he promised. One day, Mrs. Jenkins showed up and said, I understand that your dog is expecting puppies. I'd like to reserve one for my daughter, Louise. I couldn't stand to think of Louise having one of Sarah's puppies. I told Mr. Joad that I would keep them all. Hmm. See, so excited that she gets to have a puppy. And then when her best friend's mom comes over asking for one too, her reaction is not the greatest because she's wanting to keep it all for herself. Jealousy will do that sometimes, but you shouldn't have to keep everything from someone else just in spite of them. Mr. Joe said, three years ago, Sarah had eight puppies in one litter. Would your mom want that many dogs? I had to admit that eight dogs would drive my mom crazy. Mr. Joad asked me if I was afraid that Luis wouldn't give her puppy a good home. I had to admit she would give her a good home. Oh, she's imagining that they had eight puppies and her mom had to take care of. That's definitely a lot of dogs. And yeah, Kathy's starting to realize that Luis would not be a great dog owner. A week later, Luis came home. Her mother had already told her that they were both getting puppies. She was all excited about us raising them together. Next, she started talking about all the campouts at Pine Cone Peak and how her uncle and aunt had already planned a return trip for the following summer. I pretended to be interested in the book. When she told me that she was glad to be home and that she missed me so much, <clears throat> she brought me a red pine cone peak sweatshirt and a sparrow's feather and a rock collection and a whistle on a lanyard that she'd woven herself. I told her how much I missed her, but I didn't tell, tell her how mad I was. Okay. Kathy's just a little bit upset, still at her friend, but Louise is so grateful to see her best friend again and so excited to share all the wonderful things. I'm glad Kathy kind of realized that she really her friend really loved her and misses her and shouldn't be so mad, but I hope she'd share everything with her. I took Louise to meet her new friends. To, uh, sorry, I took Louise to meet my new friends. I knew they would all like each other, and they did. I said, aren't Sarah's spots beautiful? I'm going to get her the first puppy that looks like her. A few nights later, Mr. Joad called and said that Sarah was having puppies. 
By the time we arrived, one puppy had already been born. It was brown. Mr. Joe handed it to Louise saying, when he grows up, he'll look like Sarah's mother. Oh, see, Kathy's introducing Louise to Mr. Joad and his dog, Sarah. And I get that call that there's puppies. Oh, I think that little puppy's going to go to Louise. Sarah went to sleep, and Mr. Joad and Louise made hot chocolate and tried to think of a name for her puppy. I couldn't wait for mine to be born. Sarah slept for hours. Finally, Mr. Joad said, it looks like there's only one puppy this time. Sarah has never had such a small litter before. I felt awful. It wasn't fair. Louise got to spend the whole summer camping at Pinecone Peak, and now she gets Sarah's only puppy. Sees Mr. Joad and Louise are going making hot chocolate. Mr. Joe is going to check on Sarah. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Okay. Oh, good. All right. You're going to sit here? Okay. I, I'm sorry, everybody. I, I had a nosebleed when I went to the parade. Oh, I'm sorry. You had a nosebleed. Do you want to finish this with us or do you want to? Okay. okay. The play is over. Okay. Well, let's finish that story. Yeah. Kathy, the play is oh, over. Okay. Yeah, Kathy's really upset that she doesn't get to have a puppy now. Do you think she feels like it's not fair that her friend gets the dog that she's always wanted? <laughs> Louise said, I think the brown puppy should belong to both of us. I think we'll name him Golden Silverwind. Mr. Joan said, I'll build him a dog house between your houses. And Sarah and I will help with the training. See, Luis is such a kind friend who wants to make sure that they're both be happy. So they get to share that dog. They get to have a dog just like they wanted a horse together in between their houses. And that's such a kind offer for Mr. Joe to help with the training, huh? The poor way is When I got home, I kept thinking of how lucky I was to have a special friend like Luis. I was already worried about how much I'd miss her and when she went away the next summer. But at least this time, when she's camping at Pinecone Peak, I'll have golden silver wind all to myself. See? Because Kathy's loving her blessings and having such wonderful friends. Those are some pretty amazing best friends she's got to have such a kind heart. Do you have a best friend? Rosen. Rosen, yeah. And, and Maya and Julia. Maya and Julia, yeah. Do y'all have the best friend? Make sure you let you know your, you love your best friend and give them a big hug. I hope you enjoyed all of these wonderful stories. Mm -hmm. I'll see you next Saturday um, at 1 o'clock. Y'all be safe and have a great weekend and just love on each other. Bye, everybody. Yes, I think